Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of Amateur Radio Station W1GV Whiskey One Good Vibrations at your service to clear up a little bit of confusion that may have arisen over my antenna idea, uh, my antenna nightmare that I had the other day or the other night or whenever about using two automatic antenna tuners in a system with a ballon and radiating elements to form a sort of center-fed random dipole antenna. Now when I say random dipole uh, that's maybe a little bit of a misnomer. And center-fed? Well, not necessarily. It doesn't have to be center-fed. Ideally it would be. But the radiating elements in the ideal case should be horizontal, as high up as you can get them, wire elements, and they should, they should run in a straight line, a single straight line. And the other uh, schematic diagram uh, in this uh, brainstorm idea that I posed uh, looked like they were phased verticals or something. It was misleading. So I have hoped to avoid that kind of misleading uh, problem here. 50 ohm coaxial cable to a ballon coil. Now this ballon coil, the ratio of the ballon is up for debate and I'm still not certain uh, what it should ideally be. But if you make this a one-to-one -one ballon designed for matching 50 ohms to 50 ohms, uh, you're probably going to end up with an SWR on this coax of two to one when these antenna tuners reach their proper adjustments. Uh, these automatic RF actuated antenna tuners directly connected to the output the outputs of the ballon this uh, little connector length here and this little connector length here should be as short as possible ideally uh, female to female coaxial connectors or something like that but in any case uh, or if these if these are just wire output terminals uh, you might want to have a coaxial uh, to wire output adapter or something, but you want these to be very, very short, these little lengths of wire right here. Uh, to that end, I might make them black because they're really not part of the radiating elements, which are supposed to be purple in uh, this rendition. Any anyhow, once you, these antenna tuners reach their ideal values, you should end up with 50 ohms here and 50 ohms here. Now in a common half-wave dipole, generally speaking, that would be a quarter wavelength here and a quarter wavelength here, Without any matching networks, you would expect about 37 ohms here, 37 ohms here, and about 74 or 75 ohms at the coax. So the standing wave ratio would be 1.5 or thereabouts. In this case, though, these tuners are designed to create 50 ohm in, uh, purely resistive impedances, regardless of the lengths of these radiating elements and regardless of even whether they're the same length or not. So that would, it would stand to reason then that you would see 100 ohms here producing a 2 to 1 SWR on 50 ohm coax. Most radios are okay with a 2 to 1 standing wave ratio. They don't uh, they will accept up to a 2 to 1 standing wave ratio and some radios have their own internal tuners such as my ICOM uh, IC746 Pro that can match considerably higher 
standing wave ratios than that. But if you have a 2 to 1 standing wave ratio or less, then for all practical purposes, the increase in loss in the coax compared to a perfect match is less than 1 decibel, even for very lossy uh, long runs of coax. You can look those tables up uh, in a good um, issue of the ARRL antenna book. That's where I learned this. Uh, so for all intents and purposes a 2 to 1 standing wave ratio is as good as a perfect match and uh, you don't need to worry about that. What you do need possibly to worry about is whether these automatic antenna tutors will be able to tune these wires to 50 ohms uh, purely resistive impedance. And the answer is in most cases yes but in some cases no and the most glaring examples uh, of that are if this actual wire length here is any multiple of a half a wavelength. That is to say if the length of the radiating element is any integral multiple of a half a wavelength you are going to find that you get a very high non-reactive impedance right here at the input to the tune or the output of the tuner. It's true that there will be no reactance here, but this resistance can in some cases, if this um, length is any integral multiple of a half a wavelength, if either of these lengths fall into that category at the frequency of operation, you are going to get an impedance uh, that's purely resistive, but that resistance may be in excess of a thousand ohms for just plain wire, and in some cases maybe even in excess of four thousand ohms or about four thousand ohms or so. If you have a straight wire in the clear uh, you can expect that if it's a half wavelength long or any integral multiple thereof, you're going to have an extremely high resistance here. And a lot of tuners can't handle this. I don't know if you've ever had you know, a regular trans match that simply could not cope with your so-called random wire antenna. Because random can sometimes not be random. <laughs> In other words, at certain frequencies you're going to get a coincidence where this randomness disappears and you have a an undesirable state of perfection. A situation where perfection is the worst possible thing you can have and that's where your length is in the integral multiple of a half wavelength. So when if you're designing a multiband antenna you want to avoid half wave resonance in either element at any frequency. Sort of counterintuitive. You, you're, a, a lot of people are trained to think that resonance is somehow a magical thing when it comes to physical wire length of an antenna. Not so. Not so at all. In fact, it can sometimes be the worst possible state of affairs. But if you do that, these auto-tuners shouldn't fight each other. I wouldn't think that they, that they would. They would take a little while, perhaps differing amounts of time, to arrive at their ideal match, which in this case would be a 2 to 1 standing wave ratio. But you should be able to get that. And you, at your radio, if you have a low loss line, uh, that means your your SWR meter will fluctuate around and then finally settle on a 2 to 1 standing wave ratio. And then you know that you have the best state of affairs. Kind of a weird antenna. But then again, I've always sort of taken pride in being a little bit weird. Um, I like to experiment with weird things because sometimes 
those weird things actually work. <laughs> Sometimes they don't. But for as with any antenna, you'd want to get this antenna as high as possible, as straight as possible, and as as long as possible within reason. Should in no case uh, should this uh, should either of these radiation elements be less than an eighth of a wavelength long. So if you want to go on 160 and up, you'd need to have at least 66 feet here and at least 66 feet here. But you want to avoid that because then on 80 meters you're going to end up, or rather on uh, 40 meters you're going to end up with two half wavelengths. And if you use this system, your auto tuners may get into trouble. So if you have a problem uh, matching either side of this uh, antenna, you might add or take away a little bit of wire and see what happens, if you're of a mind to uh, actually do this. Um, I don't have the uh, physical ability right now to put up an antenna like this, and uh, although I sort of have the real estate, uh, I don't have the money either. <laughs> so. You do it! I'm too lazy. Stan Gibalisco signing off, saying 73, and as usual in any antenna system, in my favorite mode, which is CW, so long, which translates to da 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 da.